Okay guys, today we're going to go over the importance of carbon and bonding, different types of chemical bonds. So you can see on the screen here I have a carbon atom. Oops. The carbon atom right here. And we can see the nucleus has, yes, it's if you look at a periodic table, carbon is the six element. Its atomic number is six, so it has six protons in its nucleus. Remember, the atomic number is always the number of protons in the nucleus. And then, generally, the atoms have the um, same number of electrons circling as the protons in the nucleus. So it has a neutral charge overall. If you remember, protons have a positive charge, and then, so protons, remember, they have positive charge, and then the electrons have a negative charge, and so if we have the same number of positive charges of, as negative charges, then we have a neutral atom. So anyways, you can see here the inner shell of carbon has two, and the outer shell we have four electrons left over, so we have one, two, three, four. And remember for bonding purposes, the thing that's important is the number of electrons in the outer shell. The electrons in the outer shell are the ones that bond, not the ones in the inner shell. So we really care about when we're talking about bonding is those electrons in the outer shell, and carbon has four, which makes it very, very important to life because it's able to form those four bonds. It is of fundamental importance to life, the carbon atoms. We have the most numerous atom in our body is carbon. Now let's move on to talking about the two main different types of bonds that atoms can make. We have ionic bonds and covalent bonds. And we'll talk about ionic bonds first ionic bonds. Okay, so an ionic bond is where atoms exchange electrons. They exchange, one atom gives up its valence electrons, and remember valence electrons means the electrons in the outer shell, so carbon has one, two, three, four valence electrons. That's the number of electrons in its outer shell. So one atom will give up a valence electron, and the other, other atom will accept the valence electron. So let's draw an example here of, let's do KCl. So KCl is a compound here made of potassium, K, and chlorine, Cl. So if we have K here, we'll draw the valence electrons around K. And we're, I'm only going to draw the valence electrons here. So I'm only going to draw, I'm not going to draw all of its electrons, just the valence ones. And it has one. K has one valence electron. Cl chlorine has seven valence electrons. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if you remember your rules, all atoms, they would like to have a full outer shell, and for most of them, the full outer shell is eight valence electrons. So if potassium has one and chlorine has seven, we can predict that, okay, chlorine's probably going to steal that one so it can have its full outer shell of eight. And then potassium, so then this shell would be gone, and then potassium has another shell inside, and that one would already be full, so if we, it loses the last one on this shell, then we'd go down and we'd be, this would be its outer shell, and then that would be full, so then potassium would be happy also. Now, we know that electrons have a negative charge, right? Electrons have a negative charge, and you can remember that. People abbreviate electrons a lot by writing it like this, E negative, so electrons have a negative charge. So if chlorine gained an electron and it still has the same number of positive protons, we know that this chlorine atom will now have a slightly negative charge. And this potassium, it's lost a little negative charge here and it still has the same number of protons, so it's going to be slightly positive. And we know that positives and negatives attract, so as soon as this happens, the bond is formed here, an ionic bond, and then we get KCl. So that's what an ionic bond is, when one atom gives up an electron, the other one takes it, 
The one that takes the electron has a small negative charge. The one that loses it has a small positive charge. And then they bond together and they form a compound or a molecule, in this case KCO. The other main type of bond is the covalent bond. Covalent. And out of the two, covalent bonds are stronger. So covalent bonds are generally, there's different, you know, depending on the atoms that are involved, they have different strengths. But as a general rule, covalent bonds will be stronger than ionic bonds. So let's look at something, one that we all know, I think, CO2, carbon dioxide, CO2, is a covalent bond. And in covalent bonds, all the atoms, they share electrons. One doesn't steal from another one. They share electrons. So let's draw our, our elements here, our atoms. So carbon, as we have in the picture over there, we know it has four valence electrons in its outer shell. So remember, I'm just drawing the valence electrons, the outermost electrons. There's four. And then oxygen. has six valence electrons. It has six electrons in its outermost shell. And so we'll do, there's one, two, three, six there. This one didn't. What happened to this one? Okay, there's five and six. This one didn't draw either, so there we go, six. Now, each of these want to have, remember, they want to have a full outer shell. They want to have eight valence electrons in their outer shell. So carbon needs to have eight, it needs four, and then each, each oxygen has six, so each oxygen wants two. So, oh, what are they going to do? They're going to share electrons, and so this oxygen wants two, so it's saying, hey, I'll take two of those from carbon, and then this oxygen says, okay, I need two also, so we'll go like this. And now we can see carbon, since it's sharing these two with this oxygen and these two with this oxygen, plus its original four has eight, this oxygen is sharing two of its, but it's also, it also has part of carbon's at, uh, electrons here, so that has eight. And then this oxygen is doing the same. It's sharing two, but it's also it also has two from the carbon, so it has eight. So everything is happy now, and this is how the bond is formed. This is a bond. So now these are bonded together, and we have CO2. And that's a covalent bond. Now, sometimes in covalent bonds, the electrons are shared unequally, and I'll do a separate screencast on what that's called.